This is a wind turbine. Functioning at wind speeds as low as 7 miles per hour, a modern wind turbine produces electricity without polluting the air or water, without releasing carbon-based greenhouse gases that cause climate change and global warming, without destroying mountains or ecosystems. In the last two decades, European countries have embraced wind energy as an available, reliable, clean energy source. In Germany alone, over 21,000 wind turbines produce 26,000 megawatts of electric power, the equivalent of 13 large coal-fired power plants. Increasingly, Europe's wind turbines have been sited offshore in coastal waters to take advantage of higher and more constant wind speeds and larger turbine size. Offshore wind generation can be twice as efficient as onshore systems. In Europe in 2009, 830 offshore wind turbines produced 2,000 megawatts of electric power. Overall, Energy experts calculate that offshore wind energy could supply all of Europe's electric power seven times over. In 2009 and 2010, an effort to realize similar benefits from offshore wind generation began in the Great Lakes around Michigan. The theme chosen for this venue was alternative renewable energy. In the state of Michigan, we have tremendous economic challenges and offshore wind uh, as one form of renewable energy seems to be offering economic development opportunity in addition to offering uh, an alternative source of, of commercial scale energy. So it's a very old technology. In 2010, two wind development companies, Scandia Wind Offshore it will take and Blue Water Wind, took preliminary steps to site and permit offshore wind farms six miles off Michigan's west coast. Almost from the beginning, their initiative was met by resistance from landowners along the Lake Michigan shoreline who spoke up in often emotional public hearings like this one in Hart, August 2010. to develop offshore wind in, the, in four miles from Lake uh, Michigan shore would be a travesty. Uh, it would in fact be a rape of the county if this were allowed. The principal anti-offshore wind group, calling itself the Lake Michigan Power Coalition, raised several hundred thousand dollars to oppose the siting of generators in Lake Michigan. A large portion of Powers funding came from shoreline property owners, many of whom were out-of-state summer visitors who owned vacation homes on Lake Michigan. In contrast, many of the supporters of offshore wind development came from local communities that have been devastated by the rapid decline in Michigan's industrial economy. I think we need to realize that this stuff isn't new that this technology isn't new technology, that the, the scare tactics being used about you know, how this is going to be extremely damaging to the environment or to, to our, our way of life, is, is, it just doesn't play out in the real world. I think it is a wonderful idea for the sake of green energy, renewable energy, and jobs. The beauty of the wind is that uh, once you get the, the infrastructure built, that's a, a, a never-changing constant you'll have is that's free. We don't have to ever buy that again. A public debate about offshore wind generators in the Great Lakes and their role in the region's economic and energy future began, led by the Great Lakes Offshore Wind Council, called the GLOW Council for short. The, uh, the purpose for the GLOW Council was to establish and formulate uh, guidelines, recommendations, policy recommendations on how to move forward with 
the deployment uh, of offshore wind in the Great Lakes. In the spring and summer of 2010, the GLOW Council held a series of five public meetings around the state Here's the first question. to solicit public input on the findings and recommendations from their initial report. I think it's going to be real important to making sure that this process does dovetail with NEPA. Because All the options I've seen in renewable, this is by far the one that's most viable in terms of phasing out coal. I think you guys did a pretty good job, but uh, you missed a few things. One is in talking to you, you really don't know anything about global warming. And that's really what this is about, the fight against global warming. On October 1, 2010, the GLOW Council issued its final report, identifying a total of 13,339 square miles of Great Lakes bottomlands classified as most favorable for wind energy development. Although not in the list of five highest priority areas, attention quickly turned to another section of Lake Michigan, just off Michigan's west coast. The winds along the uh, western side of the state of Michigan uh, are particularly attractive uh, from a technical scientific standpoint. Uh, robust winds, predictable winds, consistent winds, even better during the colder months than during the summer months. In December of 2009, Scandia Wind unveiled a proposal to build two 500 megawatt offshore wind farms off the West Michigan coast. One wind farm would be located six miles off the coast, just south of Ludington. The other wind farm would be located six miles off the coast, near the Ottawa and Muskegon County border. The two proposed sites together were called the Agir Project. The West Michigan coast provided access to the existing electrical grid at three points, close to the Agir Project's proposed wind farms. The second critical element was the capacity of West Michigan to manufacture, construct, and maintain the nearly 200 wind turbines in the proposed project. We have some excellent ports uh, along the Great Lakes shoreline, Muskegon, Michigan being perhaps one of the premier deep water ports that could be involved in the deployment of offshore wind technology. And we also have a great history of manufacturing here in West Michigan. Since World War II, when its factories formed a critical link in U.S. war production, Muskegon has had a long tradition of high-tech skilled manufacturing. Statement with the potential of the wind farms in Lake Michigan, the fact that we have the deep water port, that we have land around Muskegon Lake, that we have skilled machinists, that we have companies that uh, could perform the erection of these wind towers. And we're fortunate enough to have uh, marine operators, some of uh, Lake Michigan's best marine operators, and Port City Marine Services and Andrea Incorporated. Uh, we have marine construction companies in Great Lakes Stock and Dredge. But as well, there's ample uh, coastal properties uh, available here on Muskegon Lake for the assembly and, uh, prior to installation uh, in the Great Lakes waters. Once manufactured, the components of the large 5 to 10 megawatt offshore wind turbines must be assembled for transport and installation offshore in a large facility called a laydown yard. Here too, Muskegon offered a special resource. The recently closed Sappy Paper Plant offers a potential 100 plus acre site for a laydown yard. Closer to downtown Muskegon, the 26 acre Mart Dock facility offers another potential hub for the assembly and shipping of offshore wind turbines. The Mart Dock that we're standing at today is a, uh, it's a 26 acre parcel that was created. Uh, along the shorelines of Muskegon Lake back in the 20s. It's a deep water facility that has uh, uh, improved sheet piling along its perimeter, uh, some uh, 20 some hundred feet of improved perimeter. Grand Valley State University's Michigan Alternative and Renewable Energy Center, called Merrick for short, offers offshore and onshore wind projects a vital research and development resource. We have the capacity here at Merrick to bring technology 
business, industry, entrepreneurs together. Uh, we can bring science, we can bring research. We can bring community conversations together as we already are doing and, and anticipate doing more of. And so uh, I think the, 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 the Merrick Center is, a, is just a natural place where we can offer an opportunity to have an objective look at the technology, have an objective look at the question of uh, renewable energy for our future. The need for renewable electrical energy from more efficient, larger capacity offshore wind turbines has never been more urgent. Scientists estimate that the United States must reduce its carbon-based fuel use, coal, oil, biofuels, and natural gas by 80 percent by the year 2050 if we are to avoid catastrophic global warming. Offshore wind offers Michigan both clean energy at a sustainable and predictable cost and thousands of new jobs in an industry of the future. There's no question that we're going to see new forms of renewable energy, alternative forms of energy, and so the question becomes do we do we have a direct West Michigan stake in that? Do we capture, if you will, a piece of that opportunity, a piece of those new industries? Or do we wait uh, for other people to bring it to us eventually when we finally decide we're ready for it? Within 50 miles of this spot right here, almost every manufacturing function can be found. And, and that includes laser cutting, plating, welding, you name it, I can find it within 50 miles of here. That's the street. You look at the public trust. Uh, the lake system is for all citizens. Uh, everyone owns the lake, if you will, right? It's, it's the public trust. But I think when you balance the common good, it boils down to that. It, it boils down to an embrace of uh, alternative energies, and it boils down to jobs for local community members.